the owners said, oh, I've been on that painter. So I've been, this is a painting I did of which one of my slides looked like. So it's very abstract. And I, I'd rather do this, I'd rather do the stem cells. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, how do stem cells work? How do they heal and repair? Well, we're born with 300 sex trillion stem cells at birth. They drain right underneath the skin, 99% of them. And so they receive humoral signals from dying cells every day. Millions of cells are regenerated, re replaced. And uh, so uh, the, uh, the dying cells, whether it's liver, heart, brain, they send out a signal and they, they say, hey, I'm, I'm, I need your help. I'm, I'm dying. And so they, at the source underneath the fat, around the vessels, they regenerate. They'll form a heart or muscle or a brain cell, whatever's needed. And then they duplicate it. One stays in reserve and one goes out to repair. And this is how it works. So uh, they go out, they have a humoral signal, they go out into the bloodstream, they go to the target organs, and they actually uh, they actually uh, go to the dying cells and they um, so that they get the duplicated and they go out to the uh, going out for repair and they go out, you can see that six cell, a dark one, and it's going to replace it and heal it. And uh, so when we give patients IV stem cells, what happens? They see the entire body and the stem cell because it's not differentiated will multiply and they grow. And so if we give someone 10 million stem cells and come 20, 40, 80, depending on the age, they, they double every two to four weeks. And, um, and they, they, they have life of stem cells seven and a half years. So when you give them IV, they last a long time. Uh, so anyway, um, that's how it works. And so, uh, Several years ago, I said, you know, why not instead of taking a graph of the ear or rib, or if you do a nose job reconstruction, or if you need muscle or fat cells, why not bioprint what you need? So we have 3D imaging or, uh, or MRI, you can actually bioprint. Uh, uh, Paul came in from Sweden. We did a workshop at my clinic where we did international symposium. And uh, I saw him. Uh, Few months ago, we had another international symposium in Fort Lauderdale, and uh, but he moved to Florida now. But he's he's the expert. We used to uh, first did three D bioprint I saw was size of a big room, and uh, now it's very 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 compact. So uh, uh, this is the fellow in the Wake Forest. I call. Uh, he, I've never met him. And I was going to meet him this week, but he's out of town. So next time I come back, maybe we'll meet him. He, uh, he was raised when I went to medical school. He's a, his ancestors in the Middle East too, like mine, but uh, he's a very, very smart, great man. And uh, I went back to his beginning again. This is something crazy. So anyway, this is the international symposium I did. You see that again home there. He young leader, he young leader came from Korea to participate. Uh, we, uh, my clinic would uh, hold, we had lectures at the hospital next door, about 100 doctors. Then we did the workshop in my clinic. That's the size of a bioprinter. It's, it's amazing. My son has one. He does, he does, um, he, he, he prints uh, trinkets and things, but we actually print. You have to use uh, to print living tissues. You have to have a living ink, living scaffold. You don't do a lung, you just, uh, it just leaks out all the cells. You have to go to the lung, same with the kidney, and you use that as a scaffold. And then you have to feed them to, different, to numerous different types of cells. Yeah, but we did a baby nose at that workshop. And uh, so the way I use it in clinical practice is I actually bioprinted for Carla. She had lost her nose, a lot of box surgeries, and uh, she had no nose, so I made her a new nose with a bioprinted Carla. Uh, uh, to, to make themselves, it's uh, 38 steps, uh, two ounces of fat, centrifuge filter, uh, incubate with class A enzyme to digest the fat. And this is the, so the process of two ounces of fat went up about 25 cc to incubate. And then uh, it's, uh, these are 38 steps. And you know, I have technicians. If I'm doing like a body sculpting with a laser, I draw up some lasers. Now you can, you can uh, take someone that has a little excess fat around the mid zone or thighs. Take that out, then you have my technicians prepare a stem cell. Then we do a non surgical face for the stem cells or a breast job or whatever. This is the enzyme, the flagination digest that releases stem cells. In my age, 
the stem cells are trapped in the fat. It doesn't know where to go, what to do. So you have to take it out and release the stem cells, deploy it, and then this centrifuge in cells. Above. And then we count the cells so we know this is the laboratory quality counter. Uh, it counts uh, the stem cells. And then, um, and then we, uh, we, where we inject stem cells in a joint or spine, we actually use PRP, platelet plasma, as a scaffold. PRP is a uh, the system I use is seven growth factors, millions of platelets. It's a good scaffold. So we inject the joints and spine, we inject PRP, you can't inject that in the vein. So this is uh, uh, where you know, my, I built my clinic around the Japanese cord pod in Jordan, and uh, this is my office. And, uh, uh, the, the art is really back here. We had a um, that's a, in the background of many ways at the Silver Gully at the famous piece so that uh, I met Dali in 82. Away. Anyway, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, we have IRB Central Institutional Review Board. That's how uh, new drugs and devices are approved. Uh, you actually uh, uh, determine safety and efficacy of any new device and drug with an IRB. I do a private IRB. Uh, it's FDA IRBs in different types. And uh, so anyway, uh, uh, I have a, a 3D system there. And, uh, so we can actually more and show patients what they will look like in six months before they decide on the surgery. So we're doing slide, we use CR, we use a forest the scope, so we know where we are. And um, so I have a pain management surgeon, spine surgeon, orthopedic surgeon, uh, IRBs, uh, you know, because uh, say that I trust the FDA, and, uh, you have to do only what you're board certified for. I'm a hand surgeon also, so I do the hands. Uh, so anyway, uh, this avoids surgery in 80% of the patients. And uh, this is a laser I helped develop that I'm the last one to use this because they were uh, bought out by the competition and closed down because I acquired the uh, patent and I, they couldn't close me down. So I, I, I'll use her cell to do a nice surgical facelift. And this lady, had, this is the only new photo I showed because she had uh, mastectomy cancer. And uh, instead of doing the flaps from the back and having it, I took all of that out of her abdomen thighs, convert stem cells, return, reconstruct her breast with stem cells, and uh, the same with her set to be closed. And uh, in plastic surgery, I'm probably some, I'm the first one to do non surgical facelift. I did a face with stem cells and neck with lasers. And uh, chapter 29, first book ever published on stem cells in plastic surgery. And, uh, so, you know, we take someone like this. The important component of aging is loss of soft tissue is women, especially postmenopausal, they lose the fat in the face and the muscles atrophy, and the skin becomes loose because the gravity of sags. So instead of tightening this way, this way, we actually uh, 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 just do a 3D space lift of our own stem cells, and it, it lasts longer than the face of. And I had the first automated system. I bought this out of South Korea. Yoshimura in Tokyo wanted this. I said, you'll get the same one. I'll get the first one. So anyway, I, <laughs> this, uh, <laughs> I, this, uh, and uh, since I fought the Great War, I, I had to go to the early on. Uh, Yoshimura is a genius out in Tokyo. He has about uh, 50 plastic surgery residents all the time. And he's, he, uh, I'll, I would be lecturing together in, uh, in uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, in about in June, in, in Las Vegas. So anyway, he's a. I've learned a lot from him. I learned more from young people than do older because <laughs> uh, 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 you know, as physicians and anything when you uh, PhD or MD, whatever, as you get older, you get stuck in your ways. You do the same cook, uh, cookie cutter procedures over and over again. I've never done that. I'm going to catch some deficits, so I'm constantly learning, and you got to. You got to grow or you go with the uh, weather away. Uh, so this does it on three steps. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, I got FDA approval uh, to use it uh, for injecting charts and not IV. So um, I kind of temporarily put it away. I'm building a new center pretty soon that we use it. But uh, uh, usually I need a lot of stem cells, I need multiple batches. So 38 steps does it three steps. It's a neat device and invented in South Korea. And, uh, so this just shows you how you do it. And then uh, um, um, I had the first one. This is uh, what my new center 
will look like. And I quite think I, I, I'm always a um, uh, 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 very uh, uh, optimistic and think big, and I think it's going to be a little smaller. But that's mm -hmm. I like the design, and this is a operating room design, very really futuristic and uh, very little surge. It's going to be more non surgical innovative procedure. And then we designed it so the nursing station will be in the center, and then we have eight or nine patients at one time. Uh, and uh, you know, and uh, uh, this is a, a year or two ago, a couple years ago, uh, the cover of the doctors, three years ago, doctors magazine. But anyway, uh, uh, I went back to this. I love that picture. I dangle at it. <laughs> and uh, do it again. I'll put some wrong place. I think that I don't think I'm done yet. So anyway, uh, uh, this is a uh, 1912 Meniere Dawson puzzle painting. He had pioneered abstract art, and uh, my wife and I control the collection of Dawson. He's in 50 museums every year. We go and make donations. But uh, uh, yeah, speaking of puzzle, I, I believe it's the younger generation. It's that my youngest son, when he was eight or nine, and he's now. Big kid, <laughs> and uh, he's so like smart. I am, and uh, I'm a legend on mine, but a children like Betty and Alexander and all of these guys are much smarter. Any, any, now we <laughs> got any questions? Uh, you got it, yeah, okay. What about you were? So you were in Korea for a while. How did you, you speak get, up on? You were in Korea for a while. How did that influence your going into plastic? That's a good surgery? question. And uh, uh, when I was uh, when the war was over, I was kind of bored. What to do? So uh, I helped set up a mask. One of the things I did was uh, help the plastic surgeon there. I kind of was peeking at what he was doing. I passed out a couple of times, and then <laughs> he said, "Hey, uh, Sergeant Obi, you help me to set my." Uh, he was taking on a mass unit in the village and he was doing a lot of um, uh, pediatric plastic surgery. But anyway, uh, he, uh, so I helped him set up his mass unit. So I said, you yeah, guys, I think I'll do that when I grow up. And uh, I got his surgery open. I mean, you're a high school dropout. You're going to be a plastic surgeon? Well, just perseverance. And, uh, he, uh, and when I came out of the Marine Corps, uh, I went to the University of Florida. And, uh, I didn't say, well, listen, I got to uh, college, medical school internship, four or five residencies. So I didn't say that. I, was, I, I kind of learned to live in daytime compartments and you know, get one day at a time. And then, so uh, that's what I would recommend you guys do. We wake up. Uh, 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 Today is the first day of the rest of my life. I'll never ever be this young again. And uh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? But uh, that's a good question. If I didn't quit high school, I would not never become anything, I don't think. And uh, so just, just on. Um, um, yeah. Can somebody lot, group? We have a lot of wonderful eager students here. Right ahead of Okay, I tell you, uh, Frank, uh, you know, Emerson once said, um, do not follow the path before you, but uh, follow your own path and leave some trails. So, yeah, that, that's what I recommend. Don't, don't just be, uh, I'll be an engineer, I'll be a doctor, or whatever. Just do what you know, you may have to wait until you're in a war like I was, <laughs> but wait until you really mature and you see, you kind of observe, you got to look at different professions, you work with different people. You say, maybe I like this, and you work with them, stay with them. You go in and clean, clean the floors, whatever they want you to do, just to get to see what they do. And when you see uh, a, a vocation or or a profession that you think you like to do, then do like an internship or just work for it. If you think it would be a plastic surgeon, we'll work with plastic surgeon. Want to be an engineer, work for an engineer. But watch what they do and say, uh, okay, I'm 18, 20, 22, whatever. Uh, at age 30, 40, 50, 60, or 88 like me, 
when you still like doing it. And I, I can't wait to go to work every day. It, and if you love your work, it's not work. And it, it, it's it's just like a, I had. I haven't taken a salary in a long, long time. And I, I go ahead and just and I put all my, I make good money as a practice surgeon, but it all goes back to my stem cell uh, patients. They, they can't afford stem cells, so I don't do it for them. And if they can afford some, I haven't paid for it, but I pretty much cover that. I get millions of dollars in the research and equipment to do stem cells. And um, again, it's kind of sad. Uh, yeah, I was the last one doing it in the United States. Just the FDA and the AMA and the government we have is that they, they support big pharma, big money. And uh, yeah, most physicians, they go to specialties to make a lot of money. Like uh, dermatology is the highest paying specialty because simple doctors do everything. <laughs> I call them simple, but they, uh, they mutilate a lot of people. I don't have much respect for them because it's all about it. It's a money machine for them. Um, but uh, so. You know, you, you, when you go and see a physician, and I do, uh, you know, he comes in with a laptop, his key, and I walk out. <laughs> I want you to talk to me first. Yeah. Touch me before you just touch your laptop. And if you touch your laptop, you throw out or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, uh, that's my attitude. And, uh, so, uh, and I, uh, yeah, I have a lot of respect for other physicians, but, uh, they have to uh, the number one concern to be the patient and to heal your patient, do no harm. And unfortunately, you know, like don't get it started, the stat drugs just create a huge population of people with dementia. And they just recently discovered the stat drugs kills your CoQ10. It's a very important uh, enzymatic uh, 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 component of uh, the brain. It's only 2% of our body weight, it spends 20% of our energy you know and you, you have no to stand you can't you can't use your whole cells and they move their way so I, it's things like that i'm very really frustrated by the position being a pharmacist i know uh, you know i understand you know, pharmacology i understand what's harmful to your body and don't put it in your body it's going to harm you yeah which is even very important i love chick-fil-a because my daughter one well, of my daughter's owns two of them but <laughs> it's the only fast food i'll eat occasionally but uh, uh, what kills us is sugar and carbs. You got to stay with sugar and carbs. You know, last night we had one of Eddie's friends you know, from India. They eat the healthiest food. I, I was going to say Mediterranean diet, but I think Indian diet is even better. <laughs> you know, but how you say so? But <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Sports very important. I ran my first marathon when I was 63. I guess when he's going to 75 or 80, we have my last life on the team. I still kick butt. That's <laughs> good. But um, you have to stay active. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quit eating after 2 p.m. <laughs> but that's for my reserve uh, uh, lecture. Um, uh, you know, wellness and life extents are very important. And, uh, and the American diet and fat food will kill you. You can get away from that. You know. But I was, um, you know, obesity was not an issue until much later in my life. But, you know, it's just what it is. I'm fat now. I'm going to do some more fun. Any other questions? Okay. All right, Jordan. Right, well, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before you all leave, we want to get a group photo outside before everybody has to go to their one o'clock classes. So um, let's step out.